Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and in it we're looking at the second online quiz for Chapter 9, which is about t-tests. The first question is, a two-sample t-test is an appropriate test when a, two samples are being compared on a nominal or ordinal level variable, b, the data contain open-ended or undefined scores, c, the two samples are being compared on an interval or ratio level variable, or D, a sample mean is being compared to a population mean. The correct answer here is C. It's appropriate when two samples are being compared on an interval or ratio level variable. Uh, a here, about nominal or ordinal level, well, you can't compute the means in those cases, and actually you would want to use uh, what we call a chi-squared test, which we're going to cover in Chapter 12. Uh, as far as the data containing open-ended or undefined scores, that wouldn't work because you need to be able to compute means. And so you can't do that with open-ended or undefined. And then this last one, a sample means being compared to a population mean. Well, that's when you would probably want to use a one-sample z-test or a one-sample t-test, depending on whether you know the population standard deviation. But uh, let's take a look at C here. You want to use a two-sample t-test when two samples are being compared on an interval or ratio level variable. So we have a, uh, the formula here for the two-sample t-test, and there's two things. Number one, um, Again, it's on the numerator at the left. That's the important part. We have x bar sub 1, which is the mean for the variable for group 1, and we have x bar sub 2, which is the mean for the variable on group 2. Two things about this. Number one, there's two groups, so it's, it's two samples. But also, these are means, and so you have to have variables where you can compute the means. And so that means interval or ratio, or quantitative, you can call them, with no open-ended or undefined scores. So that's the situation where you would want to use a two-sample t-test. Number two, imagine that a researcher conducts a one-tailed, that is directional, two-sample t-test with a critical value of minus 1.83 and gets an observed value or test value of t equals plus 1.98. What is the proper conclusion in this case? And the choices are retain the null hypothesis, reject the null hypothesis, or cannot be determined without additional information, or that the researcher, researcher should use a two-tailed, i.e. non-directional test. Well, in this situation, the answer is to retain the null hypothesis, and it's kind of a funny one. The researcher specifically said they wanted a one-tailed hypothesis test, and that the critical value is in the negative side, which means they're looking to see if the sample value is below that. And although the absolute value of this cutoff is 1.83, the, the value that we got is positive 1.98. And so here's what it looks like in the picture. We've got our nice little null distribution. We've got the critical region on the left. It's all on the left because this is a one-tailed distribution where we're looking for something in the low end. And the sample mean is really far away from the mean, but it's on the other side. You see the red X on the high end. And so this is a situation where you would, for instance, only do something if it showed an improvement by lower range scores. This one actually makes things worse, so you wouldn't do it at all. All right, number three. Cohen's D indicates the number of what? A, standard errors between two means, or B, standard deviations between two means, or C, matching observations in two samples, or D, different observations in two samples. Well, the answer to this one is B, the standard deviations between two means. Standard errors between two means is going to be uh, a t-test. Um, matching observations or different observations in two samples, those are entirely different things that we don't cover in this course. Uh, let's take a quick look here. Uh, we have two versions of Cohen's D. Uh, there, there are others, but here's two. Uh, the one on the left is for the one sample uh, t-test, and you see that it's comparing a sample mean to a population mean. So those are the two means that we're comparing with each other. The right side is for the two sample t-test, and you see that we're comparing one sample mean to another sample mean. Um, this is the version where I've dropped off the uh, the part with the two population means because we always hypothesize that to be zero. Anyhow, these are two versions of Cohen's D where we're comparing two means with each other and we're looking at the standard deviations, either the uh, one sample standard deviation or the pooled standard deviation um, for the two sample case. All right, number four. If a researcher wants to compare the effects of an antidepressant to the effects of a placebo on levels of anxiety, then what is the dependent variable, that is the DV? The choices are medication, either antidepressant versus placebo, 
or B, levels of anxiety, or C, antidepressant medication, or D, two sample T tests. You'll see that these are the same choices we had in an earlier version of this question. And in this case, the answer is levels of anxiety. That is the outcome variable. Now, A, medication, antidepressant versus placebo, that is the independent variable. That's the thing that's manipulated and it's expected to produce the difference. C, antidepressant medication is still one of the levels within the independent variable. And D, two sample t-test is simply the inferential test that we would use in this particular case. But let's take a look at the table to see what we got here. Um, it's the same table that we had before. IV is on the left. And so that's the independent variable. It's the manipulated variable, such as whether you got placebo or an antidepressant. And it's the cause. It's the thing that's expected to, pr to change the scores on the outcome variable. On the right column is the DV, the dependent variable, and it's called that because it's supposed to depend on, the scores that people are get are supposed to depend on their level in the independent variable. And what we have here is, it's also called the outcome variable, or just the effect. And so, the IV is the cause, the DV is the effect, and in this particular experiment, levels of anxiety are the effect, the thing that's supposed to be affected by the kind of manipulation that people get. All right, number five. If a researcher gathers data from participants before and after they participate in an exercise training program and wants to know whether their performance scores improved, then he should use A, a one-tailed repeated measures t-test, excuse me, that was two-tailed, B, a one-tailed repeated measures t-test, C, a one-tailed one-sample t-test, or D, a two-tailed two-sample t-test. Well, we're looking at whether scores improve before and after, and so the answer is a one-tailed repeated measures t-test. We do a two-tailed if we just wanted to know if the scores were different, but we don't want to know whether they're different, we want to know whether they improved. Uh, C, a one-tailed one-sample t-test, well, that's if we had only one group of people comparing to the population, but here we're looking at before and after for uh, the same set of people and a two-tailed, two-sample t-test. If we had two different groups of people and we only wanted to know whether they were different, but we have one group, it's before and after, and we want to look at the differences. And, you know, this is what we have from the PowerPoint is the hypotheses here are if you, ex if you have a one-tailed test and you expect scores to go up, then these are the hypotheses that we, you would use in a uh, repeated measures t-test. All right, that's it for the second quiz in Chapter 9 on t-tests. We'll see you for the third quiz.